Anyways, what are we? Oh, we're doing Urban Legends. Okay. Let's. Ah! Welcome once again to the Thirteen Nights of Halloween. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Thirteen Nights of Halloween. I'm your creepy host, Rish Outfield. And I'm the kooky host, Big Anklevich. <laughs> yeah. So each night we're bringing us some... Bringing us. We're bringing me, really, to something that I want to talk about for once. After so many episodes in a row about sports. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just for once, we're finally going to give you your shot. <laughs> but uh, about a month ago, I went to a, a, a comic convention and... Uh, I, you know, I, I, I took the kids because they really seemed to enjoy it. And it's like, oh, hey, buy me something. And uh, on the third day, I didn't take the kids. And it was just me and my cousin, who's an adult, and then my niece, who's 13. And instead of going around and buy me something, we decided to go to panels. And panels are something that I just, I, I didn't have the luxury of going to when there were little kids, when you've got a three-year-old with you. You know how it is. Did yeah, you go they, to any panels won't... when you went to that convention? No, we did not. No, we just walked around in the uh, the main hall. That's true. I probably could have because my at least I didn't have three year olds. I mean, the youngest one was ten, and they might have found it interesting, but I didn't plan on staying that long. And that seems to be a problem with any convention of any size. Is there's always going to be several things trying to get your attention at the same time. It's like, oh, I'd like to go to this, or I'd like to go to that. Uh, unfortunately, they're all, uh, you know, at the same time, so I have to choose. Uh, if we're talking about San Diego Comic-Con, there's a bunch of things that you can't get into at the same time. So it's just like, oh, I'd like to do this, this, and this, but instead I'll stand in this line. But on this one, uh, there was a panel about urban legends. I had said to my niece and to my cousin, you know, let's each pick a panel, the one that we want to go to most during the day today, and... You know, we'll make sure to, to go to those three, and then whatever time there is left, we'll just see what panel looks interesting that's about to start. And that was the one that I chose, Urban Legends, because I, I, I've i loved Urban Legends my whole life. Before I even knew... They were uh, actually legends? Yeah, before I real. even knew what the term... Some people call them like friend of a friend stories, or uh, contemporary myths or legends or kind of thing. But uh, basically, it's just modern mythology of stories that are passed around again and again as though they're true, uh, whether they're scary stories. Mostly they're scary stories, but sometimes they're funny stories. But a lot of times in the Internet age, it's just bullshit that people pass along. It's like, oh, did you hear this? Did you know this about the national anthem? And it, it's, it, you know, fear-mongering, hate-mongering, yeah, they have kind of wonderful whole, stuff. They have that whole Snopes website that's just dedicated to proving or disproving the crap that gets passed around on the Internet now. And yeah, there's that show Mythbusters that's been going for years and years. It's a huge deal of just like, okay, this is a, a belief. Let's find out if it's true or not. And my niece and I went to this panel, and it was a, a, a big, fat guy with a beard who was, you know, not elderly, but he was past middle aged. And he was on there, and he was just uh, he was he was trying to show us that he was educated by just because he was talking about the background of stories and why stories get passed on time and time again and you know before writing, you know when there was just mouth to mouth to mouth resuscitation. Yeah, um, that's how stories got that's passed. How along. you passed stories was mouth to mouth. I think that that was how you you got started into the act of making babies. Actually, okay, Let's you see started how. with mouth to mouth and then. Anyways. Your world is very strange and, and unfamiliar to me. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, he was just talking about, like, why do these tales persist? Why do we enjoy telling them? Even if we know they're not true, why would we spread them and and all that stuff? And I didn't want to know the why so much as I just wanted to hear a bunch of urban legends. <laughs> so he told, like, one or two at the very end. Not that it wasn't the end, but after he had given his prepared speech, he told a couple... And, oh, I was just delighted because he started to talk about stories. Uh, he talked about this Russian sleep experiment that half the audience perked up when he mentioned it. It was like, ooh, ah, and I had never heard of this thing. But it's a lie, but it's the story of that the KGB took a bunch of these uh, young people and they, they s tried to see how long they could go without sleep and uh, all sorts of crazy 
stuff went on of people losing their minds and see, people seeing things that they couldn't possibly see and knowing things that they couldn't possibly know and, you know, slaughtering themselves and others. And, and it's all a lie. I mean, there were never any of these things, but we want to believe it because, well, the Russians are bad and the Russian, you know, they don't have our, our the, the Russians don't love their children too, right, Sting? <laughs> And I, I was just like, whoa, this is so cool. And my niece had heard this Russian sleep experiment thing before. And she was like, no, that's totally true. <laughs> and, and that's the sort of thing I just, oh, I like it. These are stories that you want to be true. Uh, and then he talked a little bit about, you know, the chewing gum made with like spider eggs. And he talked about, you know, uh, this this killer that would, that would go around and uh, he'd killed his family and that. And then he was all out and, and his face had been all disfigured. And he was out there and he, anybody that laughed at him or anybody that looked at his face, you know, he had to kill them and that. And there were, there were people, it was really interesting because people were getting like excited about this and they were all, you know, that it, it became audience participation after he told these two or three urban legends. He's like, okay, you know, I can hear that some people are obviously familiar with some of these things. How about if you start to share some of your favorite urban legends? And honestly, I could have sat there for three hours and just listened to this because people would stand up and they're like, did you hear about this guy that did this? Or did you hear about there was this woman, she had this bouffant hairdo and she didn't wash her hair. And it was like weeks after weeks and it just kept getting itchier and itchier. And finally she died. And when they took her into the hospital, turned out there were all these cockroaches that laid eggs inside her hair and then the eggs had hatched and they'd eaten her brain. And, that, and he's just like, yeah, that's a great story. And it's like, who's next kind of thing. And they're talking about like this, this bridge where this crazy guy lives. And some woman is like, yes, that was in my town. And it's like, really? Is that in anybody else's town? And there were like three or four people in the <laughs> audience. One was from like Michigan and one was from like Washington State and one was from like Arizona or whatever. And there's like all of them had had this bridge that this supposedly happened in their town. And I, I was having so much fun. He talks about, you know, some of the scarier ones, some of the more famous ones, uh, such as, uh, and, and the thing is, I'm tempted to give the punchlines to him, but that, that ruins the story. You know what I mean? It's like the easiest thing is, you know, to tell the, the story of the, the hook is the end of the story. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? The ghostly hitchhiker. You tell the ghostly hitchhiker, well, you didn't exactly bury the lead there, did you, by the name of the story? I wonder how it ends. <laughs> uh, but anyhow, I, it, it was over. It was only a 45-minute uh, lecture, and like 20 minutes of it had been his anthropological studies of why people tell stories and why people want to believe things that, that might not be believable and then latch on to these, you know, these horrible things that happened to a friend of a friend. But afterward, I was telling my niece about some of my favorite urban legends and that when I was in sixth grade... <clears throat> I read this book that had some in them and it was just like a book of scary tales, but it was, it was a friend of a friend stories kind of thing. And we were all in class in Mrs. Collings class doing our like silent reading thing. And I was reading the story of the guy and the girl that go up to lover's lane, you know, to make out. And then when he tries to start the engine, the engine won't start. And so he goes off to get help and leaves her there in the car. And during, do you know where I'm going with this story, right? I mean, we've all heard this story, a million different versions of this story. But the one that I remember is she's listening to the radio to keep herself awake. And this bulletin comes over that there's a man who's escaped from a mental institution, of course. And uh, escaped from the mental institution spook alley. That's right. <laughs> yeah, sadly enough, he was the ticket taker. And he's escaped and he's highly dangerous. And, uh, you know, he's he's in this vicinity. And so, you know, everybody needs to, you know, lock your doors and, and don't answer the door and call the police if you see anything suspicious. And at that moment, the girl, who's already really scared, hears something on the hood of the car. And it's a scratching sound. On the hood of the car. And uh, she doesn't know what it is. But it continues, and she becomes more and more afraid. And she's locked the doors and rolled up the windows, and, and she's just beside herself with fear. And then finally it stops. And so she thinks that she's safe, and suddenly 
somebody's knocking on the window, and she screams, and it's a policeman. A police officer, he's got his flashlight, and he asks her to roll her window down, and he says, Miss, are, are you all right? And she says, yes, and he says, hey, I, I, I don't want to alarm you, but I need you to come with me. Uh, we'll, we'll go to my car, and we'll drive away, and, uh, and whatever you do, don't look back at the car. And so, you know, she gets out, and she's like, my boyfriend, he's, he's gone off to get help and, and he's like you know it's going to be fine I'll explain later let's just keep walking don't look behind you and of course she turns and she looks and her boyfriend's body is hanging in the tree above the car and his fingernails had been scratching the roof of the car and his head had been ripped off and when I reached his head had been ripped off as an 11 year old kid I went oh out loud in class <laughs> during our silent reading time and Miss Collings hit the roof that I was disruptive and I was trying to scare everybody and all that. And I had to go talk to the principal. <laughs> and all these years later, we're talking 30 years later, right? My mom still remembers this time that I purposely disrupted the class and Miss Collings thing. And never heard the end of it. That Miss Collings years <laughs> later, 25 years later, is like, hey, do you remember when your oldest son was a disruptive little turd in my class? But I was so impressed that I had this visceral reaction from this story. I mean, it was. It was just like, you know, I couldn't contain my shock that his head had been ripped off, that it, it lit something up inside where it's just like, wow, I, I want to be, I want more stories like that. I want to feel that again. I want to be able to read that story to somebody else and have them go, ah. And so, yeah, it sort of opened the door to all that kind of stuff. I just love the stories and the urban legends and all that happy crappy and and. I wonder if, do you have any scary stories that you can share, that, that any that come to mind, anything that you like? And I guess they don't have to be scary, but it is Halloween. So. Yeah, that's kind of the urban legend thing is for them to be scary. The funny thing is, in my class during our silent reading time, I would fart as loud as I could on those wooden chairs, and it would echo around the room, and everybody would giggle, and I did get kicked out of class for farting too many times, but... None of my teachers knew my parents to be able to keep bringing that up 20 years down the line. Say, remember that time when your son kept farting in my class? <laughs> oh, shoot. That was what made me cool, though. I'm, I'm sure I've shared this you have. before. Somebody, you, you lit good farts was on your valentine. Yeah, I cut big farts. Cut somebody big. gave me the valentine that said that in there because that was apparently what I was known for. <laughs> That's going to be on your headstone. It That's... is. My my children are already planning it out. It's going to be like, here lies loving father. He cut big farts. And they're like, yeah, Wasn't... the money that we'll save on air freshener, we can spend on the engraving. <laughs> oh, but anyways, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm not as familiar with urban legends as you are. Um... I know some of them. Obviously, I, I know the hook one. I remember hearing the hook one. Although, to tell you the truth, I couldn't tell that story now. I don't remember how it goes. I only remember the punchline from it. I don't remember anything else other than, you know, there was a guy with a hook out. Watch out. They're all the same kind of... A, it basically sounds like it was the same story as what you just told, except for instead of the scratching on the roof, it was there was a hook on the door handle. Well, see, the the thing with the hook is, and all of these are cautionary tales, right? It's like, wash your hair, don't eat spider eggs, don't go have sex. You know, there, there's these cautionary tales that get told again and again because like, hey, hey, if I tell this scary story, maybe my daughter will ease up on the heavy petting, you know. Uh, but yeah, the one with, with the hook is this guy takes the girl to the secluded place, the uh -huh. lover's lane, the make-out alley. And he turns on the radio to get her in the mood or whatever. And, and there's bulletin. a bulletin that says there's a, a guy and he has a hook for a hand. And he's he's a serial killer. He's a he's an escaped lunatic, whatever he is. But he's in the vicinity. And the guy thinks that this is really funny and really cool. And, it's gonna, and, and he sees how scared that the girl is. And, you know, he's using it to his advantage, putting his arm around her or whatever. And, and she's like, I heard something. I heard something out there. And, and he's like, oh, come on, baby. There's nobody here. But it, it's probably a wallaby. And, uh, you know, he keeps trying to kiss her or whatever guys do. I've, I've, I've read of these things. 
And she's like, no, stop it, stop it. There's somebody right there. There's somebody here by, you know, by the car or whatever. And he's like, come on, baby, you know. And she's like, no, take me home. I'm scared or whatever. And so the guy turns on the engine and in this angry gesture, he shifts into drive and they tear out of the parking lot. You know, the car lurches forward and it goes. And then... He gets her home, and he's still mad at her, and she's like, I swear there was something there, was somebody there, and he's like, Ugh. he gets out of the car to get her out, and he faints dead away. And she gets out of the car, and she can't figure out why, and yeah, the bloody hook is on the door handle of her, of, of the door. The bloody hook was on the door handle. That, so there's the, the punchline of that. I could have told it better. I'm sorry, guys. No. That's one of the ones, I mean, everybody knows the Hook one for some reason. And they basically made two horror films based on the idea of the bad guy with the Hook. There was I Know What You Did Last Summer, followed by I Still Know What You Did Last Summer. And they've made they, they made a lot of horror movies based on urban legends. They have, there yeah. was one even called Urban Legends, wasn't there? Yeah, there was a whole series of those. Uh, the first one was called Urban Legend. The second one was like Urban Legends, The Final Cut. Uh, <laughs> third one was about um, Bloody Mary. Uh, it, it wasn't very good, but the, the whole Bloody Mary thing is really... I mean, that's kind of a, a, an urban legend thing, too. If, just, you know, yeah. if, if you look in the mirror and you say Bloody Mary three times or you know, <laughs> 666 times... That she'll appear to you, or the devil will appear to you, or Cloris Leachman will appear to you. I mean, it just depends on who's telling the story. It's funny. My daughter was just talking about that one just the other day. Somebody had told her the story about you say it in the mirror three times or whatever. And I said, when oh, Biggie Smalls appears. <laughs> <laughs> and she said, who's that? Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, the Candyman movie was kind of that same urban legend, only instead of Bloody Mary, it was, if you said Candyman three times in the mirror, he would appear. And, and what did he have instead of a hand? Candy? Y yes, he had a trick-or-treat bag. <laughs> no, actually, it was a hook. I was trying to tie it into what oh, you had said before. I just figured it would have something to do with the Candyman. I had... Who can take a rainbow, sprinkle it with glee? Cover it in chocolate and a miracle or three. The Candyman can. This isn't funny, Biggie. I want to go home. <laughs> that was the that I'm was the song even... that that movie was based on, right? It was. I think I got the words wrong, but oh, did I you? usually I, do. I just don't like that song at all. So I didn't. <laughs> I didn't help. I just made a face the whole time. Um, I, I could sit here for another half hour. I could fill up three or four more episodes just talking about some of my favorite urban legends. And I'm so close to doing it right now. I just <laughs> really want to. It's because, oh, it's like, okay, there's like three more. I could tell three more right now. But yeah, um, the we one probably that, shouldn't. The one that I'm thinking of, and since we're going scary urban legends, although I've heard, I mean, every time you start talking about one, I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, I know that one too. But I can't think of them off the top of my head for some reason. I don't have, like, a basket in my mind that's just full of, here's the urban legend stories. Let's see what's in it. Instead, they're just stories I've heard. But there's always the one, too, that you hear about the person who had the, bi the whatever, the growth or whatever you want to call it on their arm or something like that. They got bit by a bug or something, and this... This sore or this thing started growing on their arm, and then they finally lance the boil or whatever, and instead of, like, pus coming out, it's like all these baby spiders come out because some spider laid eggs in them and used them as, a, as food for their babies. That's one of those things that always grosses people. It's similar to the hair, the bouffant wig thing, the cockroaches inside of it. But, uh, yeah, this, that's how, uh, Brian Lincoln lost his job at Princeton was that, uh, <laughs> the, the boil popped full of the baby spiders during his, uh, what, what do they call that? Where, where they decide whether you get tenure or not? I don't know what they call that. Do they have a name for that? I'm sure everything has a name. I have so many names. Okay. Chalupa. Whoops. Sorry. I pushed the button. I pressed the button. 
Okay, well, hey, I, I, I want to talk more about this. Let's come back tomorrow and we'll talk more about this, all right? Okay, we could have Urban Legends Part 2. Yes. Kiss it. To be continued. Can you say continued? Continued. Can you say continued? To be continued. Say to be continued. To be continued. Continued. <laughs> okay, I'm done. Okay. That gets my goat. It is produced under Carated Carmen's Average Use and Non Commercial. No deliveries. 3.0 license. But that will be our little secret.